Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Robert. I hope you're well. Morning, Susan. I'll give you a wee wave. Good morning, Liz. There's my wee Manny. Say hello to Liz. Hello, Liz. Come on then. What is it? What is it? Ralph, where's the squirrels? Morning, everybody. Here we go. Sunday morning. No idea what date it is. 25th, maybe. That was a guess. Maybe I won, maybe I didn't. Um, where are we? We are Folly 12, part 7. So, let me think. We have done the ordinary world. We've done, we're hearing somewhere inside us in a distant voice, a call to adventure. We refuse the call. We meet the mentor. We cross the, we cross the threshold. We've done that. We've done that. So where we're at now is, well, partly yesterday, which I didn't really explain that effectively. I don't know how to do such fancy stuff like waving hands here. Oh, that's funny. So, atonement. And atonement could be, uh, this is where we start to accept the shadow self. In some myths, it's atonement to the father because the father's had such um, a bearing influence in our development, be that while he was present or indeed absent. So, as we start to recognise all those shadow aspects in ourselves like a lot of shadow aspects could be something along the lines of uh, for example a projection I could give is oh there's somebody copying my work but even these is the work of Joseph Campbell <laughs> you know this is the hero's journey and it's the 12 steps so and I've just put my flavour on it it's like um you know, you hear of somebody's judgment that they might that, that that they might know somebody that comes in and starts befriending your Facebook friends and you've heard them complain about that and then the next thing they're starting to ask your friends for friends requests. It's those places where we put judgment on other people and aren't quite prepared to look at our own shadow and we've all certainly got one that's for sure and so we move from atonement into what's called apiosis apiosis and apiosis is sort of like what we would describe in the 12 step process as step one which is accepting that you're powerless over alcohol accepting that you're powerless over drugs accepting that you're powerless over your current situation and what comes with apiothis is it's always a death and rebirth story this is this is definitely one of my favorites i love it i love how the fact that we're constantly dying and having to be reborn we're constantly dying and having to be reborn now you know our cells are doing that every every other day and then we have a major transition every seven years biologically we're constantly dying and we're constantly being reborn. And I guess what I said yesterday, which was a quote from Nietzsche, was a snake that is not prepared to shed its skin will surely perish. Now, um, you know, yesterday, my aton atonement with the father, it doesn't necessarily have to be your biological father. It could be an atonement with, so for an example, uh, it was the church for me. I went to a Christian Christian religious secondary school it absolutely warped my thinking about Christianity and I blame Christianity oh, it's a pile of crap, it's a load of rubbish right, 2010 I found my way into a particular church in Lanark the minister's pretty left wing, I dig the way that he was saying stuff, now I don't agree with everything he says um, I don't agree with everything he says but that's okay, he's allowed to say it because that's his opinion but Whatever it was, I'm not going to be negative about my minister there. Well, I am, but I'm saying that his words and the way that he delivered the Bible allowed me to look at Christianity through a different lens. Um, 
So I had an atonement there. And then once you've had an atonement, you can then have a move into apiotis, which is a death. So a death of an old way of thinking, which was primarily blaming my secondary school religious education as being a pile of pants and actually looking at it through a new lens. But the old self that was so hell-bent so hell bent in blaming the external wasn't able to give that a chance, right? So this is where, in um, some ways, because we're... So in the last step, atonement, well, that's where you're identifying that you've got an ego... And an ego only allows you to really see the world from a two-stroke, three-dimensional perspective, right? So in order for us to then move into apiotis, the death that I perceive it to be is always an egonic death. It's always, an, it's always a death of the ego or because the, the, the ego has placed meaning on so many things that validates our experience of it, which then when we're proven wrong by our thinking that this maybe isn't the best way to manage our life situation, then when we have the realisation that there's another way out there, um, it's like a death of the ego. So, like, uh, yesterday, yesterday I was nearly feeling that on it. I wasn't, I wasn't on the ball, and that's OK. Uh, back on the ball today, feeling, feeling fine. But yesterday I was uh, down collecting some groceries and I met two guys that I knew, not very well, but I knew them from my past. And um, one of the guys, when he had a drink in, in him, you wouldn't even want to be in the same room as him. He would have started a, started a rammy in an empty house, right? And he's got himself clean and sober and all that defines him of who he was then is the tattoos that he has because those tattoos were aligned with the personality that he was portraying when he was actively in addiction. And now he's in sobriety. There's a childlikeness about him. There's a kindness. Uh, he's engaging. A really nice fella. Really decent guy. And uh, he, would even admit it, he would even admit it himself that the regrets that he's got and the scars that he has are the tattoos of his past. The other guy, similarly... Um, we'll not talk about what he was involved in, but he was involved in a bit of naughtiness. And he's turned his life around and he's coaching kids with boxing and all that now. And I met them, another absolute delight of a guy, brilliant guy. Now, in order for them to get to where they are, comparison to where they had been, there had to be a death. There had to be a death of an old personality that was no longer serving them. And it really can feel like a death. And... To give you concrete examples of step 10 here at Apiothis, because we would depict it more simply in art and symbolism and meaning, uh, symbolism of this would be the phoenix uh, rising from the ashes. The old self has to die for the new self to be formed. So much so that even friends that you knew from the past don't even recognise you any longer because there's been such a significant difference in you. Uh, Christ and the crucifixion. That's a story of death. Uh, the book of Genesis, when they ate the fruit from the forbidden tree, that I, my favourite book, my favourite book in the Bible for sure, the creation story, and how when they ate the fruit there was a death of innocence. And uh, that's in Genesis chapter 3, Genesis 22. And uh, the Lord said that man is now like us, and he knows the difference between good and evil, right? Interesting how it says the Lord is like us. Us meaning who? Is there hundreds of gods out there? I don't know. Anyway, there's a death. A death and a rebirth. So, you're in a relationship that's not working. Then, if you're going to move into a new way of being that old way of being has to go. If you're grumpy, if you've always done what you've always, if you've always done what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten, right? And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you're out there and you're going in and the way that you're acting towards your wife or husband or kids and the response that you're getting, try a different way of being. 
right try something different try a different approach but top of the morning to you where is lockdown where is lockdown david harvey my man hi man how are you doing um so i just passed where you jumped in yesterday have and um so something has to die right so symbolism so we look at the phoenix how it how it how it burns and then it's born in the ashes so really it's an agonic death so in order for us to fully experience ourselves as multi-dimensional beings multi-dimensional beings meaning that we're able to see a much broader perspective than the current lineage that we're looking at our reality then there has to be a death you know 1700s they believed the world was flat right um, I wonder what all the flat earthers are thinking with social distancing being two metres apart because inevitably somebody's going to fall over the edge. But um, until the 17th century, they believed the world was flat, right? So when this new science emerged, everybody must have been like, wow, Apios is death. No, it can't be. It can't be. The world's flat. You go over there and you fall over the edge, right? So... It's like we've been conditioned and habitualised into a lot of ways that we think. So, um, West of Scotland males, maybe it's all males, but I can only speak for West of Scotland males, we've been programmed to think that, uh, you know, you, you meet aggression with aggression, or you can't cry, you don't greet, big sissies greet, um, all these kind of things. When in actual fact, when you get into talking about your atonement, or indeed, the step before, atonement with the Father, forgiving, forgiving and acceptance, and a lot of surrendering, it's undoubted that you're going to have a catharsic moment. You're going to have a moment of emotion. Now, in order to... In order to experience that, there has to be a death of the ego that's been keeping you safe through, I do not process emotions. You know, I don't do emotions. Right? So this step is around about looking at what's not working for you, right? Entering into the cave, because what fears you most is your biggest gift is in there. If you've got the courage to go into the cave and we re grab the treasure, right? Atone with the Father. And moving into this step, which is Apiothis, which is death and new beginnings, right? And maybe some of you are there right now with this lockdown uh, maybe some of you are starting to the lockdown's getting so much to you that you're starting to realise and think outside the box that there might be another way there's always another way um, so uh, the death, the metaphorical death the death of the ego the way that we've been perceiving things I am right, this is right well what if you're not right what if I'm not right? What if... What if there is a way of communicating that's not linguistically? Telepathy. Like, what if that was possible? But we spent how many years... I still can't punctuate, spell, or hold a sentence together, but how many years did we spend learning linguistics and language at school? Some people even going to be a scholar, a professor, a professor of language. Wow, chew. Right? So, what if we became a professor of our heart and what our heart needs but none of us have ever really been taught that right nobody's ever been taught how to set intentions nobody's ever been taught how to get out of their current predicament because they think oh well this is your lot you've made your bed you'll need to lie in it do you is that true um so if you're contemplating making a change whatever that change might be change a relationship change a job change a personality change of direction, change of anything. It's really terrifying and actually feels like you're going to die because a part of you, the personality that you've been running that's been created egonically, which in some way has assisted and helped us manage our environment, it may have got to a point where the rooms became very small and we feel very constricted within it. So if we're looking to make a, a change, move in country, changing where we live, changing the way our relationship, changing our relationship, changing whatever it is about ourselves, 
The only best way that I know of is through symbolism and art, which is the phoenix in the ash, phoenix rising through the ashes, Christ in his crucifixion. It's all about death and rebirth and emergence is something different. We all have the power to emerge as something different, but in order for us to do that, we have to let go of our old narratives that we have been telling, right? Now, apiothis can come, not necessarily. And, and again, that's a beautiful thing when you start to look at these theories, is they can be applied in a macrocosm or a microcosm. They can be, you can look at them as the overarching, I'm 47, you can look at it as the overarching development from zero to 47, or you can look at it from moment to moment. There's minutes and it's like, I remember reading something in a book and it was, when are you going to stop using your anger to protect you from painful emotions, right? When are you going to stop using your anger to protect you from pain, painful emotions, right? And it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It hit me like a, like a sledgehammer in the back of the napa. And it was like, hmm, oh, wow, makes a lot of sense. But I had used anger, frustration, as a way of not feeling inadequate, right? Of not feeling like a failure, not feeling that I wasn't good enough. Predominantly in my language, I'm dyslexic. I never knew that. Uh, I never knew that until I was 30 something, right? So a lot of my frustration is it was inside my head. It's like kind of shaking inside my head that I know what I want to say, but I could never say it as a kid, right? And then the way that I did describe or present myself, it made me look or made me feel that I was inadequate, right? So any time that I um, feel inadequate, the big brother, anger, anger cloak, big brother protection guy comes to the rescue. I mean, man, we're not going to let you feel that, right? We'll just meet, we'll just meet that head on. You're a big guy, right? But in actual fact, the way that I felt. Now, the interesting thing about this is, right, if we just scrape a wee bit, a wee bit below the system. So my um, Achilles heel if you like, is feelings of inadequacy, right? Um, not being good enough, right? Feelings of shame, whatever, right? Um, felt that I wasn't perhaps deserving, right? Now, I kind of knew that, and I'd kind of worked through that that was some of the reasons that in my past I had used drugs and alcohol, right? I kind of knew it, but there's layers and levels to it, right? So because that was how I was feeling about myself inside, I was feeling inadequate, right? There were then these people that would appear on my stage of life that would actually tell me how not good enough I was, right? I actually had a relationship and the father of the daughter came up and said to me, you're not good enough for my daughter. Wow, really? Wow, that's tripped out, you're a good guy. Anyway, let's not go into him. Um, let's not give them any energy. Um, probably be at some sort of satanic, satanic cult right now. Certainly not worshipping the same Lord I do. But um, I got angry at him. But in actual fact, all that person was reflecting to me was how I felt about myself. Right? So, and in a lot of ways, that had validated in a perverted kind of way that that's who I thought I was. But when you start to work on it and you start to burn your way through it and you realise that you are good enough and you're as good as anybody else and I have got as much right and you have got as much right as anybody else to breathe this beautiful air and be part of the world. You're not hurting anybody. You're not going out and you're, you're not intentionally going out to hurt people, right? You've let go of competition, greed, and we've used those narratives in order to stay... So when I've moved into a more authentic... That's a bit cheesy word, authentic, no. Um, I moved into a new way of believing it myself that I'm actually different, but not lesser. I'm not... I was caught prior to that. I was caught in a superiority inferiority complex, superiority, inferiority, right? And when I got beyond that and I let that construct, that personality go, it was like a death. 
because in a lot of ways it had validated who I was. Now, I had been wearing that outfit, like the Emperor's clothes, for fucking, what, 40, 45 years or something like that, 40, 43 years. So, that was difficult. So, this is a time when you're on this process about apotheosis, which is about death and rebirth. What is it about you that needs to die? Is it the greedy monster? Is it the one that's eating pies all the time? Are you overweight? Are you heading for diabetes? You know, are you are you rocking straight towards diabetesville? Or worse, are you drinking too much? And that's your that's it's habitualized. You know, even if you're not getting drunk all the time, if you're drinking every day, that's a habit, right? But that's who you are. It's like the label, isn't it? It was like my sister and I. My sister's hilarious, right? Um, here I go storytelling again. I was on the phone to my sister the other night there on Face, FaceTime. Me, me and my two sisters were having a FaceTime, right? And my sister Sarah's like that. Here's lockdown in the east end of Glasgow, right? And she looks out, the, she's pointing the phone out the window. And they, and there's a, and there's a, there's a, there's a table and there's four folks sitting around it and they're all drinking butt fast. And I was like that. I says, that stuff's going to become dearer than crystal, Laura dear. I says, that's going to become dearer than crystal just shortly. I says, you're only allowed to buy one bottle per person and the, and the abbey's shut. I says, wow, well, imagine when the stock supplies runs out. And uh, Sarah, we, we started making a joke about Pinot Noir or something like that and mixing it with something else, coffee or something stupid, right? And I'm like, I hear folk are buying it for £20 a bottle. And uh, Sarah said, oh, but what about this? And I said, but it's not about the effect of the alcohol. In a lot of senses, the label of Buckfast is why people drink it. It's like that rite of passage bottle, the way you swing it, right? Had used to have a half bottle hanging out your back pocket. Whatever it is, it's like a brand. It's like Armani. It's like Sergio Ticini. It's like Puma. It's like Mulberry. It's a brand. And we've identified with those external labels of who we think we are. The reason I was laughing was, while we were on the phone, she must have cut one out, like a wee green bottle, and put a wee yellow label on it out of Arts and Crafts, and brought it over to FaceTime, this tiny wee dinky bottle of Buckfast. She goes, I wonder how much they'll give me for this one. That was funny. Um, anyways, so death and rebirth, right? So everything that you think you've known, what if it wasn't true? Right? What if everything that you've been told isn't true? What if, like in the 17th century, we were told the world was flat and it's not flat? What if, and this is an interesting part as well, Genesis 22, here I am reciting scripture. Uh, man is now like us. He can see the difference between good and evil, right? Man is now like us. Now, again, I'm not saying that God's real, but it's a great book. And whether we like it or not, it's imprinted in our ancestral conditioning because our grannies and our great-grannies and our great-great-grannies and all the way back, that was the book that they followed. That was their manuscript. Rightly or wrongly how they followed it, right? That's not up for debate. Or how the church back then or whatever, that's not up for debate. But what was God supposed to be, right? Well, he was supposed to be a creator. Or she, she was supposed to be a creator. She created this world, right? And God made man in his image after our likeness. What if, and we didn't know it, that we could create any reality that we chose to create? What if that? What if that was true? What if this reality that you've been playing and you're stuck on channel Buckfast, channel whatever, channel joiner, channel this is who I am, channel, you know, I'm a fine one to talk, you know, I've wore, I find it really funny, but I've wore Ralph Lauren shirts and Timberland boat shoes for nearly 35, 35 years. When my mum and dad first went to America on holiday and they brought me them back, I was about 13 or 14 and I've wore Timberland boat shoes and Ralph Lauren shirts for 35 years. That's my label. That's who I think I am. Right? I would like to be different, but I'd need to be five stone lighter for the 
image that I see myself internally as. And we've all got that. We've all got that internal image, right? So what if we have the capacity through the correct intention, which we're going to go in and talk about, which is step 11 and step 12, right? So in this particular step, we go back to step one of the 12-step process of the fellowship. It's acceptance and surrender. We have to accept that our life, the way it is, might not be real. It might not be true, right? And that you can create whatever vortex of reality that you choose to create through, create, uh, through intention and feeling, right? So get up as if your prayers have already been answered. Start living your life as if it's already occurred. Start feeling it. Start, what would it feel like? Like, oh, I'll wait until I've got that before I do that. I just feel it now. What would it feel like? What would it feel like to be that? Good morning, how are you? Aye, super. Wonderful morning, isn't it? Yes. Beautiful. What well, lovely people. Right? So, um, we're all lovely people, really. We all are. Remember, that which you judge is you. So, anybody you're judging, use it as a big mirror to look in and lift all those judgments that you have in yourself. So, here, boom. What if life was a big, super-sized plasma screen TV You've got a remote control in front of you and you can change the channel and do whatever you want to be. It's like, we've got a show in the UK here, um, Stars in Your Eyes or something like that, Matthew Kelly, and you, cause, you know, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be, right? Now, if you can't sing, you're not going to be the next Marty Pello, right? So get that out of your ideas, right? And if you can't do maths, you're not going to be an astronaut. So get that, out your, get that out your head, right? Just deal with the pain right now. There's the tissues, have a great, you're not going to be an astronaut, right? But within your capabilities, right, you could change your view. So I've got a wee, a wee guy that was a, he's a bricklayer, right? He's been a bricklayer for he left the school. I went to primary school with him. I'm fond of him. I just watch his life now through Facebook. We don't catch up. We went for a burger a few years ago. But what if he could be, I was thinking about him this morning or last night. I was thinking, or the other night, he was in my head, right? And I was thinking about him and I goes, what else could he do? Right, he's a bricklayer. What else could he do? Could he become a lecturer in bricklaying? Could he become a college? What could he do? How could you transfer those skills that you've got as being a bricklayer, right, into something different? And I thought, well, that's quite complicated because I don't know anything about bricklaying. But the hardest thing about trying to um, move those skills onto something else is letting go that I'm a, I've been a bricklayer for 35 years, right? I've been a, this is who I am, a bricklayer, I can't do anything else. Of course you can. I see him up, he's up, he's up, he was up an hour, he was up an hour ago, and he's preparing all this wonderful food for his family, right? He's got a big banquet breakfast on the go. I'm like, wow, he looks as if he can cook really well, right? We've all got a transferable skill. We've all got something else we can do, but we've, Never had anybody to nurture that. We've never had anybody to sit down and mentor us and coach us and take us through what it is that we could be doing that's something other than the way that we've been doing it, right? How do you take your intellectual property that's in here, that's yours, for him it's brick lane, right? And bring that down and bring that into a way of reaching more people and he could be doing that in lockdown. Instead of sitting hodding on, having what's called in the, the fellowship of white knuckle sobriety and um, just holding on for grim death, okay? So this step here is really about looking, it's going back to step one of this, which is the ordinary world, okay? Because you've well left that behind. You've slain the dragons, you've slain the ego, you've, you know, you're meeting all your demons and now you're starting to die, metaphorically, because the ego has to die in order for you to realise the divinity that was in yourself, right? That higher power. This is where you really get in touch with it. You have a higher power. I was going to say a super, supernatural, but a higher power, okay? And this is where you can start to see that things show up in your world. You might just be sitting there, if you've been following these 12, if you're following these so far, you might be sitting with your eyes down in your phone, the telly's blaring in the background, and you just hear this advert comes out and draws you up for your phone, and it connects something, it ignites something inside you. These are the God moments, right? 
these are the interventions that when we start paying attention to them, they're all around us. And when we start writing them down and joining the dots and having somebody to hold us accountable, this is where great change can occur. This is where the phoenix can come for the ashes. This is where Christ can be reborn, right, into something else, into being a divine being, right? And we all have that capacity. We definitely do, right? If you can go from being in the clutches of heroin addiction to being sober and not using, right? If you can do that, you can do anything. Another thing that came to my mind, because I just saw it there, is like, see for ex-smokers, see when you give up cigarettes, right? See when you give up cigarettes and you're out a walk, remember how you used to notice how there was cigarette doubts everywhere? You started noticing cigarette doubts. So that was very similar to the talk. Depends what lens of reality that you're looking at it through. If you're right now in this COVID-19 and you're a conspiracy theorist and you're into conspiracies, right, and whatever the deep state and Q is going to take you down, you're going to see it as true everywhere. You're going to be like that, look, code, that Trump is talking in code and look there, he said that a week ago and look, that's happened. Right? If that's the lens of reality that you're looking at it through, then that's what you're going to see. If you're some fundamentalist Christian, right-wing Christian, and you believe that the book of Revelations is portraying the end times of man, and you look at this COVID-19, oh, there was fires in Australia, there was plagues in Africa, and now this, this is it, we're in Armageddon, we're in the end times, the world's just about ready to die. Right? Ralph, come here. That wee chap's put his dog on a lead, so maybe it's crazy. And I know that you're not crazy, but I'll put you on a lead just to be... Um, just to be a good citizen, right? So, this is going to only be a bit longer than normal, but what I'm attempting to drill in right now is that if you want to change, it feels like a death. It's letting go of who you thought you were to become who you don't know yet, right? And that's the terrifying leap, but that's faith. That's where Indiana Jones, in one of his movies, he was being chased and he stepped in the rock and it was, he was either going to get killed with the folk that were chasing him or he stepped out and he stepped because he couldn't see the bridge. He couldn't see the bridge and he stepped out and as he stepped out, he shut his eyes. Good morning, sir. Well, you, I'm right? really well, thanks. Hey, you getting on all right? Oh, lovely, hey, you, you enjoying lockdown? Oh, well, enjoying the walking. Enjoying the walking, but yeah. struggling with the rest of it? No, but I'm still walking. I'm not so bad. Right, cool. So I'm, I'm the fire service. I'm still up my work. It's not so bad for me. Good on you. Nice to see you. Have a great see Sunday. You. See ya. Um... So, what was I jabbering on about there? I completely lost the track. Nice guy. Um, yeah, Indiana Jones, and he steps out, and the bridge appears. So see until you step out of your current paradigm and take a step towards a new, a new way of being. You're never going to know if there's a bridge there, right? But, there's another passage in the Bible. This is my favourite passage in the Bible. They're all my favourites, but this is an absolute cracker. Let your yes be yes and your no be no because anything in, bet anything in between is that of the evil one, right? See if you could go, I'm going for this, 100% yes. And there's no doubt because see doubt, that's a crack that lets the, 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 the evil in. The evil is, or oh, should I have done that? Is this going to be all right? Are we going to have enough money? Is this going to be all right? Is that going to happen, right? And then we get plagued with doubt. See if you've got any doubt. <sighs> you as well just no bother Right? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Do you want to go there? No. Do you want to come out the night? No. And then don't sit there and watch them on Facebook Live and they're all partying and having a great time and think, oh, I should have went to that. Oh, no. And then torture yourself. Right? If your yes is yes, let it be yes. If your no is no, let it be no. And start stepping towards whatever it is that you think that you could do that's a transferable skill to what you've got because what you've been getting, if you've been watching this and you've been through these and people are messaging me, I know there's at least half a dozen of you that are walking through these steps, right? You're not doing that because you're comfortable in your ordinary world, which was step one. So there's a massive amount. This is where step one of the fellowship, the 12-step process comes in. There's a massive amount of acceptance and surrendering for this to be done in order for you to take that shift, right? If you've not got a relationship and you're looking for a relationship, what is it about you that doesn't want love? What, is it because it's going to make you vulnerable, Right? Then you start telling yourself you're no lovable or you're no good looking. It's not any day with how you look. There's a jack for every Jill, right? There's a Jill for every jack. There's a reason why you've got it the way it is. Don't complain and moan about it. That means you need to go into the cave and you need to find what's holding you back for the relationship. Clear it up and watch what happens. You've been in a relationship within a few weeks. In fact, you love loads, 
So, have a fantastic Sunday. And in my case, I call it ego growing, not death, like a flower. She's looking completely different growing the growing with me. Oh, that's beautiful, Sharon. Doubt is hard. I love how you explain it. Right, listen, everybody, have a fantastic Sunday. I am, my wee buddy is on 11 days of a juice diet, right? A wee guy I know is 11 days in. It's not a diet, it's a cleanse. He's 11 days in. He's just, he's just got such grit, this wee guy. And um, he's on 11 days of a juice cleanse. And I was on the phone to him last night to see how he was getting on. He struggles with his mental health like the rest of us. And, um... He's doing this juice cleanse because it just it just works for him. And uh, he was like that. You know, I bought seven days worth of juice or what have you, but I've been having an extra juice every day. So I've got to tomorrow and he says, I'm running out of juices and that's where I crumble. So I was like, right, are you, are you going to be a... Are you going down to work? And he said, aye, I'll be working tomorrow. I says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do then. I'll go and run up to... I'll go and run up to Tesco's this morning and I'll buy all the stuff and I'll make you a juice so that he doesn't crumble so he can keep on going. So I'm going up to make him. He's getting uh, apple, cucumber and mint and I'm going to make him up two litres of that and I'm going to just drop that off and leave that in a bag at his work and he can have that so that he doesn't crumble. So I'm looking forward to doing that for him. And I'm sure he'll be looking forward to receiving it. So I hope you all have a fantastic Sunday. And if you're following the 12, we've only got a couple more to go. And um, keep on it. Have a great Sunday. Super solid. Have a, have a great day. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Bye.